Hej, znów jesteśmy w Marrakeszu i razem z Fentonem Padokiem próbujemy uwolnić z aresztu profesora Hejsa. Aby to osiągnąć musimy uzbierać 200 franków, no co rzecz jasna, kiedy pusto w portfelu łatwe nie jest. Teraz udamy się w takie nowe miejsce, gdzie jeszcze nie zaglądaliśmy podczas naszego pobytu w Marrakeszu, mianowicie przejdziemy się na pustynię. A. End of the line. The sign says danger. Do not cross the salt lake on your own. It seems the salt lake may only be crossed in the company of an experienced guide. And where does one find oneself such a guide? Ach, coś wymyślisz? Fenton jest pomysłowy i znalezienie przewodnika, zresztą w takim miejscu jak, w, jak Marrakesz jest pewnie pełno osób, które zapewne odpłatnie chciałyby przeprowadzić przez pustynię Przybysza. No najpierw przeszukamy jednak to miejsce. Konkretnie żub i spojrzymy na błyszczące kamienie. I'll take some hay with me. Just in case. I can't break it off with my hand. Mamy na szczęście korbę. Korba to taki zamiennik tego przedmiotu z poprzedniego rozdziału. Kołka od nam do namiotu, tak dokładnie, który nam <laughs> wszystkie sprawy załatwiał. Tutaj korba jest niezwykle pomocna. I should be able to break off some crystals. Got it. I've leave it off a piece of crystal. Mamy flet. I spójrzmy tam w głąb w głębi znajduje się wielbłąd. There's a camel over there. I bet it could help me over the lake. I once read that camels always find a safe route because they instinctively avoid quicksand or unstable ground. Or is that cats? No, no, it's definitely something to do with camels and their sensitive feet. But of course, the camel guide is nowhere to be seen. Oj tam wielbłądy czy koty takie podobne. No jedno i drugie urocze, to pewne. Może spróbujmy skorzystać z wielbłąda, chociaż daleko, jak go tu zwabić, żeby przylazł. I'm obviously not impressing the camel. A potrzeba czegoś więcej. Potrzeba jakiejś nęcącej melodii zagranej na flecie. Assuming the snake charmer wasn't winding me up, which he almost certainly was. I should be able to entice the camel over with my amazing flute playing. He wasn't kidding. Camels do love these tunes. Przede wszystkim wielbłąd na pewno nie wybrał najkrótszej drogi, ponieważ jego ścieżki wielokrotnie się ze sobą krzyżowały, czyli mógłby sobie ją skrócić, ale widocznie tak mu się dobrze słuchało, że postanowił zrobić sobie dłuższy spacer. No i pójdziemy po jego śladach. That's what we call lateral thinking. If I follow the camel's tracks, it'll take me a safe route across. So that's the lake done. Where to now? O, chyba, że po prostu wielbłąd ze względu na swój y, ciężar miałby problem, żeby się odpowiednio obrócić i skrócić sobie w ten sposób drogę. No nie wiem, nie wiem. Muszę się głębiej zastanowić nad motywacjami wielbłąda. Tu widzimy jego ścieżkę. No na przykład mógł zamiast iść tędy od razu skręcić tutaj, prawda? Gdzie pokazuje myszką i no droga byłaby niezwykle prosta. No nie wiem, muszę się nad tym zastanowić. Jeśli macie jakieś pomysły, dlaczego on tak polas, to no to proszę pisać w komentarzach. Chętnie się z nimi zapoznam. Dobra, teraz idziemy na festyn Berberów, bo to właściwie jedno miejsce, w które możemy się jedyne miejsce, w które możemy się udać.
Assalamualaikum. Welcome, stranger. We are happy to have new faces joining our festivities. Festivities, eh? Then I'm the right stranger. What's going on? We celebrate our forefathers banishing the demons from the mountains you see in the distance. Every year we hold a festival in their honor. And today everything is really, uh, demon free. <laughs> Have no fear, stranger. Our ancestors were very thorough. Nobody here need worry about demons anymore. Great. So what do you guys do for fun? Wrestling matches are the most popular events. You are a big western man. Maybe you could challenge our champion Aziz. It is years since he has been defeated, and anyone who ends his run can claim prize money of 100 francs. Did you say prize? And money? And 100 francs? Uh, yes, stranger, but um, be warned. Aziz will most likely tear you limb from limb. In actual fact, I strongly advise you against challenging him. Perhaps you lack the physical requirements to face Aziz. Hey, I'm bigger than I look. I'm not entirely sure that makes sense, but you don't need to make sense when you're as big as me. Besides, I've done stupider things than this before. It's your life, stranger. I'll take a closer look, at any rate. Thanks for the tip. Hold on, stranger. You must keep in mind, the Berbers have very old and strict traditions. Appropriate clothing is required in order to attend the festivities. What's wrong with my clothes? I like my clothes. I expected the Westerner to be better dressed. Look at my clothing. This is called a jellaba, and you must wear a blue one in order to enter the festival. Ah, but brown would better match my eyes. Just kidding. Of course I respect your traditions, but I don't have a jellaba, and uh, I'm having some cash flow issues. Are you sure you can't make an exception? Yes, but do not worry yourself. Take this garment ticket and go to the bazaar in town. You can hire a jalaba there. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Sorry, I just usually expect these things to be more convoluted. Get yourself a blue jalaba and come straight back. I don't want to miss a fight between you and Aziz. See you later. Salam. Niebieska jalaba, czy jak to to się wymawia? Bo nie jestem pewien wcale. Tak, to, to czym się cieszę, to fakt, że wypędzili wszystkie demony, ich praojcowie, no a muszę przyznać, że ja demonów się boję, tak w sekrecie, że boję się demonów, oj boję. Jak miałem z nimi do czynienia w grze Murdered, Soul Suspect, to no, obgryzałem paznokcie ze strachu. No ale dobra, teraz naszym celem jest Jelaba, bo będziemy z jakimś tam mikrym wojownikiem walczyć i oczywiście biorąc pod uwagę walory zewnętrzne, jak i spryt Fentona Padoka, o, ten tam wojownik pewnie niezbyt groźny i niezbyt duży, nie ma z nami żadnych szans. No ale Jelaba, właśnie, musimy ją wypożyczyć, no a później ruszajmy. Talon na ubranie, o, i kupiec z tekstyliami. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, it's you again. What can I do for you? Oh, it's you again. Już wiem, że nie masz pieniędzy, więc y, tak bardzo się cieszę z twojego przybycia. I've got a garment ticket here. By Allah, this agreement with the Berbers will be the death of me. Okay. What do you want to hire? Do you have a blue jalaba? What? Well, the Berber festival is on. Blue jalabas have been sold out for weeks. All we have left is what you see here in front of you. Hmm. Damn it. No to wypożyczymy białą. Naj najłatwiej będzie ją później chyba przefarbować na niebieską. I'll take the white jalaba. Ah, a classic. You could not make a better choice. That's all for now. Perhaps I'll come around again later. Salam. Dobra, skoro mamy już tę białą Dzielabę. To musimy mieć um, jakiś niebieski barwnik. Czy coś w tym rodzaju, no nie wiem. E, udajmy się może do fiar farbiarni i zapytajmy o tę niebieską barwę. Hello. May I interrupt you? 
Welcome to my dye factory. What brings you here? What exactly do you dye here? Oh, simply everything. Cloth and clothing, fabrics, wool, skins, leather. How do you produce these dyes? They are all natural colors. We extract them from plants, fruits and minerals, amongst other things. The red color here is made from iron-rich clay, and the green is made from lichen. For some colors, we use ingredients of animal origin. Very good colors come from the certain species of aphids and snails. The purple color there comes from fluid secreted by a particular snail. Wool takes this color very well. Nice! So you can cuddle up in your lovely woolen jumper made from snail secretion. Perhaps your standards in the West are somewhat more backward. I hired a Jalaba at the bazaar so I could visit the festival. But he was all out of blues. Well, the traditional colors sell out far in advance. Could you dye my Jalaba blue? Normally I would say yes. If I can't do it, who can? But unfortunately, I have other customers who want exactly the same thing done. I ran out of blue yesterday. But I'm waiting for some supplies. What sort of supplies? I need indigo. Lots of it. Maybe I can get you some. Where do you find it? The next major marketplace is in Algiers. But it would take you several weeks to get there. But the caravan containing the delivery is already by the town gates. There's a small oasis not far out into the desert. The nomads always set up camp there and give the animals something to drink. They should bring the indigo plants to town this evening. Damn, that's too late. Is there any other way? You could travel out to the caravan yourself and bring me my supplies. Perfect. Where is this oasis? You can see the oasis from the hills in the southeast of the town. Speak to the caravan chief. He knows me personally. The order is fully paid for. But here, take this flatbread and give it to the chief. My wife bakes it using an old family recipe. And he always eats it whenever he comes into my shop. This way he will know that I have sent you. Uh-huh. Well, okay, if you say so. May Allah lead you there safely. Ha, nie wiem czy mówiłem, pewnie nie. Ta muzyka w, akurat w tej lokacji, w farbiarni, mnie tak kręci. Nie jest jakaś szczególnie może zachwycająca, ale... Nie wiem, czuję się przy niej lekko pobudzony i zmotywowany do gry. Więc wypełnia swoją rolę bardzo dobrze. Teraz zanim jeszcze pójdziemy tam gdzieś na oazę, aby szukać indygo, to jakiś interes z jubilerem moglibyśmy zrobić, mianowicie sprzedać mu coś. Dżelaby, nie, bo będzie nam potrzebna chleba, nie? Nie wygląda na zagłodzonego, więc nieobrobiony kryształ kwarcu. On takie rzeczy chyba lubi. Ah, I just knew that you would come back. What can Jamil do for you, Sidi? Would you be interested in a crystal? Let me have a look, Sidi. <laughs> This is no crystal. Well, not good crystal. This quartz is all over the Atlas Mountains. It badly needs to be polished up. That's a shame. To tell the truth, I was hoping to sell it. If you want me to, I could at least clean it up. Uh, do you still have the coupon I gave you? Yes, here it is. Then this service is free of charge. Wait there, I'll do it now. Your quartz, sir. Looking considerably finer for Jamil's light touch. Thanks, Jamil. I'm going to have another walk around town. See you soon, Sidi. Rzeczywiście wygląda zupełnie inaczej wypolerowany kwarc, bo szczerze mówiąc wygląda na jakąś miskę, na jakiś talerzyk bardziej. The processed quartz crystal really catches the light. I zupełnie nie przypomina tego, co mu daliśmy. No dobra. Co, wracamy na pustynię, prawda? Na tę oazę znów. Znów, wtedy nie było takiej możliwości. 
A teraz oaza się nam pojawi jako miejsce interaktywne. Phew. That's some heat. Ah, perfect. The caravan's still here. A ten atlas, o którym była mowa już w dwóch rozmowach, to rzecz jasna nie jest jakiś atlas geograficzny, ale góry. Dobra, porozmawiajmy z nomadem. Excuse me, do you have a moment? For a westerner? Always! Come closer! Are you part of the merchant caravans from Algeria? I certainly am. Can you take me to your chief? He stands before you. How can I help you? My word, a bit of luck for a change. So it's like this. The dyer in town told me you have a shipment of indigo plants for him. Yes, that's right. He sent me to pick them up. A likely story, friend. And how should I know you tell the truth? Uh, this is going to sound a bit funny, but this bread should be all the proof you need. Ah, oh, from the dyer's wife. This is proof indeed. Please, take the plants. I thank you. This has been a most efficient transaction. I wondered why you stopped so close to the town. The city gate is only a few hundred meters away. You don't know much about caravans, do you? Is it the flight jacket that gives me away? We have almost 40 camels in our caravan, and they are all fully loaded with goods for the merchants in Fez, Rabat, and Marrakesh. If we pass a town along the way, we cannot possibly ride through the souks with all our animals. Souks? The rows of alleyway stores. Gotcha. We now load the goods bound for Marrakesh onto a few camels for transport into the city. Makes sense. But there is more. You must realize that we are nomads. We move from one place to the other and never settle anywhere. The hectic confines of a large settlement are often unbearable, which is why we only travel into town after dark, when things are quiet. Hey, I think I just learned something. Thanks for your help. I'll be going now. Goodbye. Bardzo rozmowni są tutaj ci tubylcy. Widać, lubią rozmawiać z przybyszami z Europy. Dostaliśmy, co chcieliśmy dostać, więc nie na festy. Hello, stranger. I see that you are still not wearing a blue jalaba. Ah, I am working on that. I can only grant you access to the festival tent if you are wearing our traditional festival robe. Like I say, I'm on it. Właśnie, po prostu zabłądziłem, miałem wracać do miasta, a polazłem tam daleko aż na festyn. Dobra, wracamy do farbiarni. Mam już chyba wszystko, co trzeba. Hello, it's me again. Welcome back. I've brought the indigo flowers. Excellent. Now I can produce more blue dye. Can you dye my jalaba now? Of course. Give it to me. Here. Pure white. Yes, I can dye this jalaba blue. It should dry quickly in this heat. You can wait here if you want. It will be ready in half an hour. Thanks. Do I, you know, owe you money for this? Because if so, we might have a problem. One good turn deserves another. Thanks to you, I have blue dye again and can perform my duties. We are even now. Okay, got myself a blue jalaba. I need to get on with things now. Hagen, Hilt and Co. can't be far behind. I have to get the bail money as soon as I can. I should probably go back to the Berber festival. Maybe I can pocket that 100 francs. No dobra, ale czekamy, aż dostaniemy naszą... O, mamy naszą już niebieską żelabę. Tak, minęła. Minął ten czas. No ale zanim może się tam udamy, korzystając z tego, że jeszcze jesteśmy w mieście, załatwimy inną sprawę. Ten wypolerowany kwarc położymy tutaj. Zawiesimy na uchwycie. A, the quartz fits perfectly. The sun's being reflected? Refracted? Anyway, it's forming a beam straight through the crystal. No i coś by wypadało podłożyć. Siano, siano się zapali. 
It's amazing how you can solve your problems by setting fire to things. The gendarme loves this car. While he's fretting over the fire, maybe I can get to the stamp. What's that smell? Fire! Something's burning! What? Nom de Dieu, the car! Sacre bleu! Oh, children in this country can never be trusted. I've got to put this out! Professor Hayes. Yes? What's going on? I've set up a distraction. But I can't move from here or I'll be spotted. I see. Uh, a distraction from what, exactly? From you stealing the gendarme stuff. Do you see the table? Yes. There's a telephone, a stamp, and an ink pad. I need the stamp. Can you reach it? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Okay. I'll think of something. Um, tak abstrahując od tego, co się tutaj zdarzyło, fajnie, że biegają sobie i dziobią coś kury. Ja lubię kury, co mówiłem już w Let's Playu z The Whispered World przed laty. A Hejsowi wrzucimy tam, podamy mu korbę. Profesor, try to pull the stamp towards you with this. Okay. It worked. Here's the stamp. I'll give you the rod back in a minute. Good work. Dobra, mamy pieczątkę, możemy sobie podbić formularz. Okay, that's one more stamped form. Hopefully Lacoste will hand over the goods now. Here, Professor. Do you think you can get the stamp back on the table somehow? I'll have to throw it, but it should be okay. Good luck. Once the gendarme's back inside, I'll go speak to Lacoste. Biegniem zatem po te leki dla, dla, nie dla Lacosta, dla Hejsa, żeby nam nie zszedł biedak. Bo widać, że ledwo dycha. Monsieur Lacoste, oui? here's your form. Oh, all right, let me have a look at it. Oh, good, the stamp of the gendarmerie. This appears to be in order, monsieur. Please, take what you require. I thank you with all my heart. Toto. Bierzemy. No i wracamy rzecz jasna na posterunek żandarmerii. I dajemy przez kratkę Hejsowi. Nic prostszego. Zmieści się w ogóle między kratami? I have your drops, Prof. God be with you. I'll just take my drops. Hold on to the case for me. I don't want the gendarme to see me with it. What's this instrument in the case? Ah, my gold detector. I have a physicist friend who developed it for me. It measures the gold content of certain objects with the help of a weak electrical field. I use it to check the gold content of artifacts people are trying to sell me. Take good care of it. It's very unique, you know. Not a problem. No, wykrywasz złota. Przyda się, przyda. Chociaż nie wiem, czy łatwo by było za jego pomocą tutaj coś znaleźć. Znaleźć wystarczająco dużo funduszy, by zebrać te 200 franków. No, zobaczymy. Ale skoro mamy już wykrywacz um, złota, no to możemy coś ciekawego zrobić. O, it's empty. Pretty though. It's got an elaborate gold ornament on the top. Złoty ornament. Why should I break this thing? Let me rephrase that. Why shouldn't I break this thing? Dwie możliwości: albo tę ozdobną złotą kulę komuś sprzedać, albo użyć jej w grze. Z kuglarzem, jeśli się on na to zgodzi, i później byśmy mogli jakoś wykryć, pod, którą, pod którym kubkiem jest złota kula, ale musimy mieć wpisowe, którego nie mamy. Czyli trzeba najpierw zdobyć 100 franku, żeby wygrać, i znaczy najpierw trzeba będzie wygrać po, yy, walkę. 
z tym takim berbeciem małym, żeby... Oh, for an Englishman wearing traditional Berber robes, you look magnificent, my friend. It took a little longer than expected, but we're good to go now, right? Yes, yes, of course. Please, enjoy the festival. Cheers. Nie lubię, jak mi ktoś przerywa. Wygrać z tym małym berbeciem, żeby zdobyć 100 franków. I am looking for a challenger for Aziz the Invincible. Who has the courage to challenge Aziz? 100 francs for anyone who can bring Aziz to his knees. Okazał się ciut większy niż się spodziewałem. No ale... No ale damy mu radę pewnie. Ah, finally we have a new challenger for Aziz. This is your purpose here, stranger, yes? Oczywiście, oczywiście, tak. I'm not here for the conversation. Put your hands together for the challenger from the west. How should I announce you? Well, my name's Fenton Paddock. Hmm, a dull name. Where are you from? Hong Kong. But you are British, no? Leave it to me. I am an expert in such things. Introducing the challenger from 10,000 miles away, here to fight against the champion of the Karamush, Aziz the Invincible. Please, welcome to the ring, the foreigner, the 300-pound titan, the one and only... Padlock! If Padlock can defeat the undefeatable Aziz, he will claim for himself a prize worthy of a champion. 100 francs! The rules of the game are very simple. The one who lies motionless on the ground for more than 10 seconds, or who is ejected from the arena first, loses. Let the battle begin! Oh god, what have I let myself in for? Damn it, Ada! <laughs> I did warn you about Aziz. I'm just trying to lull him into a false sense of security. Next time it's the real deal. Jesus, I'll be lucky if I walk away from the next time. Nie wiem co on pił z tego z tego wiadra. Nie wiem co tam było, ale to coś z pewnością zawierało hormony wzrostu. Urósł, no trochę za bardzo urósł. Oderwał się od ziemi. Na zbyt dużą wysokość. No i co, co robić? Pójdziemy może do namiotu szamana. Peace be with you, my friend. And with you too. Relax. And let me tell you your fortune. It's not really my thing, but you can have a go if you like. Why is it that you are here if you do not believe? That's a good question. Wait. You're looking for something. Who isn't? Well said, my son. But you are looking for a friend. But along the way, you have already lost much. Granted. My plane, my booze, my artificial sheep. You've traveled far and wide, but what you seek is a long way away and well hidden. To reach it, you will have to break boundaries that could bring you close to failure. And perhaps after all that, you will see something that was never meant to be seen. The search is a test. If you pass it, you will find what you are looking for. If you fail, then endless darkness will come over the world. And all hope will be lost. You've managed to be both Incredibly vague and very specific. You're saying I'm responsible for saving the world. All I'm really after is my friend Richard. Both questions lead to the same answer. If you succeed, you will find your friend. You will have to decide, however, what price you are willing to pay to save your friend. If you fail, it will be more than his life at risk. Not for the first time. I think we're done here. I don't really have time to decipher these cryptic pleasantries. 
Wait. I see something joyous as well. Shortly before you reach your goal, you will find something that you do not seek because you believe it to be lost. You mean... You mean I'll have a full set of cufflinks again? Hmm. Mnie się tak od razu kojarzy z kim, no ale... Nie wiadomo, czy on w ogóle y, rzeczywiście widzi przyszłość i jest takim wielkim wieszczem, czy, czy coś ściemnia. No chociaż rzeczywiście, tak jak Fenton tutaj powie, występ był imponujący. Nawet pasuje do tego, y, co dotychczas przeżyliśmy. Well, hats off to you. It was a good performance at any rate. Knowing your future can be exciting, but frightening as well. Whatever way you look at it, it's a very intense experience. Yes, but something tells me that intensity isn't entirely natural. Be honest, you've got something a bit naughty burning in the background, right? Oh, this is no secret. The smoke of the thorn apple seed opens the mind and deepens your consciousness. There has been no manipulation or hypnosis. I simply sharpened your senses so that you could see images from your future. Hmm. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty... relaxed, if you know what I mean. And tomorrow? You will have a serious headache. But do not concern yourself. Thorn apple is not harmful in such small quantities. Believe it or not, we actually use it as an aphrodisiac and a remedy for uh, lung problems, as an example. Having said that, you need to know that it is poisonous and must be used in moderation. Can you sell me some of your thorn apple seeds? You seem to like those, don't you? I uh, have some problems with my lungs or something. I think thorn apple seeds are the only cure. It sounds most likely. Unfortunately, I cannot give you any from my stock, as I am already running low. But you can find thorn apples growing almost anywhere where there's enough moisture. It looks like a thorny weed with white flowers. You're sure to find some in the area. Thanks. Fajną ma tę czaszkę. Ciekawe, czy prawdziwa. Dobra, już wiemy, gdzie możemy znaleźć chyba kwiaty bielunie, nie? Goodbye. Wszędzie, gdzie jest wilgotno, więc idziemy... Marudzisz. Idziemy do oazy. No i to chyba bieluń, nie? Going by what the shaman said, these could be thorn apple bushes. And there's a stretch of water close by, so the location fits as well. A to ciach ciach? Ah, these must be the seeds the shaman talked about. I'll grab a plant. They're a little thorny, but needs must. Tak, może to lekko naciągany sposób na wygranie walki. Ach, nie mówiłem nic, bo myślałem, że strażnik znowu może nas zaczepić. No, ale wsypiemy ten bieluń do tego wiadra. Is there nobody here who would like to challenge us? Is? Are you all cowards? My nigdy. Fenton nigdy nie był i nie jest chórzem. Bad Fenton. Shouldn't be cheating, but it's all for the greater good. I just need to slip the seeds in when no one's looking. No, jakie oszukiwanie? Chcemy go tylko... I for a challenger for Aziz the Invincible. Who has the courage to challenge Aziz? 100 francs for anyone who can bring Aziz to his knees. Job done. Chcemy go tylko rozluźnić, bo jakiś taki spięty się wydaje. Zrobimy mu przysługę. Co to za oszustwo? You? You want to try again? Really? Hear ye, hear ye! The British Bulldog, the mighty Pedlock, has returned to challenge Aziz once more! This is why you have returned, correct? Tak, tak, 150-kilowy padalec. Sure, I'll give it a try. Excellent! Let the battle begin! A 
Unbelievable! How did you best as is? I am the mighty Padlock. Do you need more explanation? I am certainly impressed. We will need to retire as is very soon, I think. Please, take your hundred francs. Thanks very much. No, dobra. Mamy 100 franków, no to teraz jeszcze ze 100 franków. Powtarzasz się. Ze 100 franków musimy zrobić 200 franków. To już łatwiejsze niż z 0 franków, 200 franków. Dobra, zagrajmy w te kulki, czy co to... W co to się tu gra? A, it's you again. What do you think? Care for a little game? Tak, tak. Why not? Maybe I'll get lucky. Excellent! Let's start with a warm-up round. We'll play without bets first. Before we start, take a close look at everything so that you understand the game and won't accuse me of anything afterwards. So, I've got a wooden ball here. I'll set it under this cup. See? You haven't lost me yet. Now, I'll move the cups to different positions. Jeden. Got it? Dwa. Trzy. Dwa. I think so. Where's the ball now? Środkowy. Choose a cup. Middle cup. Got to be. Exactly. You see? It's simple, isn't it? Now, let's get down to business. If you choose the correct cup, you will win double the amount of your bet. But if you get it wrong, your money belongs to me. Got it. Let's start. Is it just me, or did you go a little faster that time? Well, of course it's going to get harder once you placed your bet. So, where is the ball? Jestem przekonany, że kulka powinna być pod środkowym kubkiem, ale tak nie będzie. The ball has to be under the middle cup. Or not. Tough luck. Damn. There goes my money. Another round? You'd love that, wouldn't you? No, no. I've had enough. Oh, what a pity. Maybe later. Wow. This guy earns his money. I need to win it back. But I get the impression it's not exactly a fair fight. I need a way to track the ball's movements. To co mówiłem. Mamy wykrywacz złota, mamy złotą kulkę, więc do dzieła. I can't follow the cups at all. I don't think there's much room for fair play in this arrangement on either side of the table. Ah, it's you again. I knew you would want to give it another try. I'll play again. But I want to make sure that everything's above board. You're not accusing me of doing something underhand with my cups or the ball, are you? In a word. Don't worry. I've got nothing to hide. I'll prove to you that I'm not cheating. I'll use any suitable item that you give me. It shouldn't be too big, and it has to fit under the cups. So, what should we play with? How about this gold ball here? No problem. We'll play with that. But that will double the opening bet. Each of us will put in 50 francs. Okay. Then let's get started. So, which cup is hiding your golden ball? If you guess right, you win 100 francs. No i sprawdzamy po kolei. Od prawej zacznijmy. God bless modern science. The gold detector lit up. So the gold ball must be under the right cup. Trafiony, zatopiony. If the detector's working, the gold ball must be under this cup. All right then. The ball is definitely under the right cup. Hmm. So it is. We have a winner. Must be my lucky day. You can say that again. Here are your hundred francs. How about a rematch? No, oczywiście. W końcu jesteśmy hazardistami. No, ja jestem w pewnym stopniu hazardistą. Muszę przyznać. Why not? Seems like I'm on a real lucky streak right now. Excellent. We'll double the ante again. That means that each of us will wager one hundred francs. If you guess correctly again, the 200 francs will be yours. Otherwise, I will be the lucky one. Okay? Okay. It's a lot of money, but I feel unbeatable today. All right then. I'll set the ball in the middle again. Fine by me. Feel free to make it a little harder this time. 
Now, where is the golden ball? A teraz spróbujmy od lewej. Got it. The light on the detector lit up. Znów trafiliśmy. Left cup. I'm 100% sure. Are you really sure? I mean, we're talking about a lot of money here. You can't make me change my mind. Left cup, I said. Whatever you say. Damn, you got lucky again. Unbelievable, eh? <sighs> here are your 200 francs. I've had enough for today. My wives will kill me when they see my deal. Don't want another rematch? Nope, not today. Your lucky streak will ruin me. Well, no hard feelings. I'll get out of here. Yes. I suppose I don't need to wish you good luck. I finally got the bail money. No cóż, te fundusze w taki bardzo przedsiębiorczy sposób Fenton zdobył. No idziemy wykupić hejsa. Listen. Oui? I've got Professor Hayes' bail money. All of it? Yes. 200 francs. Very well. Then Monsieur Hayes is free to go. Come on, Hayes. You've made bail. Au revoir. Are you okay? Yes, thank you. Let's go. We have a lot to discuss. I am terribly sorry for our less than civil surroundings. As long as dear Monsieur Lacoste is at my shop, it's a far from suitable venue for discreet conversation. At any rate, please make yourself comfortable. This tale is not a short one, but I'm certain it will be an interesting one. That may be, Professor. Just bear in mind, it's a long time since my last lecture. I need to find my friend. End of story. I'm well aware of that. But if you ever hope to find your friend, you will need to know what you are searching for, and what may await you at the end of that search. It's a new approach to me, but I suppose it couldn't hurt. My academic research focused primarily on Tibet. I've been fascinated with its religion, its secrets and its legends ever since I was a young man. I became something of an expert. I held a professorship, and sometimes I even received funding to lead expeditions. The last of these expeditions was with your friend, Yen Wang. As you know, we found a dead monk, pieces of a map, and a gemstone. The Eye of the Dragon. Exactly. The remains of the map held clues to a mythologized monastery in the Kembalung Valley. This hidden valley was said to contain the entrance to the legendary Shambhala. At that time, however, I only knew that the Buddhists believed Shambhala to be a kingdom where a dynasty of enlightened kings safeguard the most secret teachings of Buddhism. Of course, I always assumed that Shambhala was a religious myth. But the idea that this place could really exist... It was an exciting prospect. The chance for a truly sensational discovery. Unfortunately, the early onset of winter upset our plans, and we had to give up. I was never able to return to that search. Regardless, I compiled all the knowledge that existed on Shambhala. I studied all the available sources, retranslated old texts. The result was a picture of a mysterious place of indescribable power. Can you describe it? An ancient place. And it's not just important to Buddhism. Other religions and cultures also have ties to this location. There, my friend, is where all questions and answers have their origin. So that I may perceive whatever holds the world together in its inmost folds. I'm not a big one for riddles, Professor. Could you be a little more concrete? I don't need enlightening, I just need my friend's whereabouts. You may yet find both. When do we get around to how? How? By finding Shambhala, of course. 
I'm not supposed to understand any of this, am I? You want me to be concrete? Here's a very concrete story. It is the result of many years of research. About 10,000 years ago, a tribe of hunters and herdsmen discovered a colossal system of caves in the Himalayas. While they were there, their intellectual capacities suddenly grew exponentially. The technical advancements that resulted from this growth allowed them to settle in the caves. The people knew that this must be a very special place. At its center, they could feel a strong energy that seemed to be responsible for their rapid development. For these people, this energy proved to be a gift from the gods. They used this gift to build gigantic underground temple complexes. Within a few generations, a prosperous culture was flourishing. Science, art and architecture were at a level far beyond what we know today. The people developed both a complex language and the first complete writing system. The energy itself, in combination with the rapid tempo of medical advancement, allowed the people to live to an extremely old age. Illness practically ceased to exist. And these caves are supposed to be Shambhala? Yes, I am thoroughly convinced that this is the case. However, you can certainly call it something else if you prefer a different name. I don't know. Even without the dragon, it all still sounds like a fairy tale. Well, the dragon... I personally believe that the dragon is merely a symbol, because the story continues. Go on, then. Something must have happened, because Shambhala was abandoned. I don't know the exact reason why, but what could have caused the people to leave this wonderful place, apart from a true catastrophe? You mean they got attacked by dragons? In a way. The dragon seems to be a metaphor for this sudden catastrophe. I can only speculate on the exact nature of this event. However, I believe it has some connection to the energy of the place. Okay, so they abandoned Shambhala, but why is the entrance still locked up? Only a few people survived the catastrophe. And they certainly had good reasons for keeping their knowledge of Shambhala a secret. They trained a sworn caste of priests who passed on this knowledge from generation to generation, and who continue to do so today. Actually, I think the Nazis killed them all. But there would be more. The caste of priests established two monasteries, far from any other settlements in which to safeguard the secret. The first monastery was built directly over the only entrance to Shambhala. In the Kembalung Valley? Most of the priests stayed in this valley, along with one of the two artifacts that can open the entrance. So you really believe that this secret chamber somehow leads to Shambhala? But that would mean that Richard is already... Indeed. But if he's there, can he still be alive? I mean, the dragon metaphor thing. There's only one way to find out. We need the second artifact, which is in the other monastery, right? We can only assume so. The second group of priests hiked over the peaks of the Himalayas, the so-called Lost Horizon, until they reached the region that is part of India today. They hid the other key there, in a temple complex. Unfortunately, I never found out exactly where this temple complex is located. But we have the Eye of the Dragon. And the engravings in the monastery say it will reveal the location of the second key. Only if we have the Keeper's Map. And, alas, this is something I've long searched for. The only clues I've found refer to a remarkable map drawn up in 1513 by an Ottoman admiral named Piri Reis. For example, this map depicts the ice-free perimeters of the Antarctic. As you know, that continent was first officially discovered in 1820, more than 300 years later. So how could Piri Reis have known back then how the Antarctic continent looked without ice? The Admiral, who had a talent for languages, made handwritten notes on the map. According to these notes, he used sources from many thousands of years ago when creating the map. 
he came across these sources during a trip through the Far East. Unfortunately, only a small fragment of the map still exists today. And the Nazis have got it. What? When you said the Admiral's name, so-and-so Rees, I've heard that name. Piri Rees. The German expedition leader, the Countess. She was talking about a map in a Berlin museum, and she mentioned that name. Piri Rees. My word. Sensational. It's a chance at any rate. If we can get to the map before the Nazis do... You want to go to Berlin? We don't have a choice. It's the only way we can get at the map. Quite apart from getting into the country at all, the map itself certainly won't be laid out in a display case. How do you expect this to work? The Olympic Games are on. We just need to look like tourists. Besides, it's a lot more fun if you just worry about these things later. Let's get the eye and get out of here. If you say so. Lacoste must be finished by now. Let's go. Please wait a moment. The Eye of the Dragon is hidden in the back room. Here it is. See? Perfect condition. Just like the day we found it. Great. No time to lose. Let's get the next train to Casablanca. Then get on a ship to Spain or Portugal. The further from the Nazis, the better. It sounds as if you're no stranger to running from problems, young man. You remind me of myself a few dozen years ago. Professor! Get down! Leave him. We have the eye. Which is Gref? Professor. They've taken it. Don't get up. I'll get help. Don't be a fool. You must follow them before they escape. You need a doctor. No. Listen carefully. If you are found on the crime scene, you will be arrested. You cannot help me anymore, my boy. But help yourself and the others recover the Eye of the Dragon. Now, now it's up to you. You alone to prevent the Nazis reaching Shambhala. Excuse me, sir. A telegram just arrived for you. Thank you, Axley. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. I just wondered... I don't need anything else at the moment. You may go. German ambush in monastery. Stop. Richard's still there. Stop. Paddock to the rescue. Stop. Now in India. Stop. Send reinforcements. Stop. Waiting at Camp Hadley in Rangpur, North India. Stop. Signed Lieutenant Thomas Finch. Stop. Jaskini Lwa, rozdział czwarty.
the Countess and her cronies disappeared into that building. That must be where she plans to examine the map. What a coincidence. That's my plan as well. Ha, no poprzedni rozdział, powiedzmy taki był dość leniwy jednak. Taki przygodówkowy, ale niewiele było cutscenek, natomiast sama końcówka jednak była znów emocjonująca. No i niestety smutna, bo Hayes zginął, gdzie była plama kałuża krwi. Nie wiem. W każdym razie dotarliśmy tutaj, w międzyczasie gubernator Weston, Lord Weston dostał telegram od Tomasa, no i ciekawe jest to, że go spalił. Tutaj zaś zaczynają się 11 Igrzyska Olimpijskie właśnie w Berlinie, więc ciekawe czy będziemy też kibicować jakimś zawodnikom, no nie wiem. No i mam nadzieję, że ten rozdział będzie fajny i bardzo emocjonujący, ale jak będzie o tym się przekonamy w, kolejnym, w kolejnych odcinkach. Tymczasem na teraz to już wszystko, do usłyszenia, pa pa.